Well, all and welcome. It's WrestleMania week. Yes, WrestleMania week. That great and wondrous time of the year where wrestling fans get to see so much wrestling. It's crazy. Yes. So, anyways, um, so I just thought I would come on here and, and kind of talk about you know the week. I'm not going, as I said in my last video, but there's lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff going on. Um, because it is WrestleMania weekend. Um, so you know, like. Um, I would say for anyone that's going and watches this video, um, if you're going to New Orleans, definitely at least try to check out some of the live music. Um, that would be my, you know, my biggest thing. And when I say live music, I'm not talking like Mickey James. I mean, actually go to a club that is playing live music <coughs> and hear some good blues or jazz <coughs> that they're playing. Um, of course, New Orleans is known for its jazz. They have a good jazz fest. I used to go to New Orleans when I lived in Houston at least three times a year. Um, great and wonders. I've not been there. Well, that's not true. I, I, I went um, after Katrina, but I've not been there since. Apparently, it is much different than it has ever been. And um, so I hope everyone has a good time and has a great and wondrous time. So anyways, um, WrestleMania weekend. Um, of course, next year, WrestleMania weekend, Things might be a little different. I don't think they'll be that different. Um, if, if you if you listen to people, as uh, in uh, San Jose, um, they're gonna try to make things. You know, WWE's tried to make it so that the you know everyone that rides their coattails um, can't can't do that next year. It looks like it's just gonna make it more difficult, and that they're still gonna have all these groups going. I think that's a huge mistake. I think they should just be like whoever wants to come, come. And you know what? We're going to make our stuff better. I.e., you know, if they, you know, if WWE made access, and there's already tons of people that go to access, but if they made it so that the um, diehards really wanted to go to access because it was more inviting, um, it wasn't necessarily just waiting in long lines, it was more entertaining, um, you could actually, you know, there was, there was a ton, a lot more, uh, people there than, you know, for autographs and whatnot, than are there. Um, if all of that and the tickets weren't quite as, as expensive as they are, and they just made it more of like a wrestling festival, you know, access, and they made it like, or not even a festival, like a, a like a, um, I don't know, carnival maybe. And it kind of is that, but I think it could be even more of that. Um, you know, I don't think they'd have to worry about these other groups because enough people would be going to these shows. And, you're probably talking all of this other stuff that's going on. I would think maybe 20,000 people, maybe probably closer to like 10,000 people is what you're talking about. And you're talking about, you know, events that, you know, upwards of, you know, 50 to 70,000 people are going to for WWE. So it's kind of just, it boggles my mind a little bit. But. Anyways, um, we have lots of stuff going on. I, I think the biggest news coming out of, of the besides WrestleMania itself um, is with Gabe. And I'm not doing this to kind of harp on Gabe. I think a lot, probably a lot of people will think that. But um, Gabe announced. He waited till pretty much the last second he could announce it. And I will say that I, I think what he did was not right. Um, because uh, basically he announced that there would be no Dragon Gate proper Dragon Gate Japan uh, talent coming for his shows. Now, the issue with that, and he says, you know, we, we waited the last minute, we were trying to get everything done, and, and it, just, it just couldn't happen. The thing is, for probably the last two weeks, at least, maybe even longer, you had people, probably the last month, some people, who follow Dragon Gate in Japan very closely, really were like, there's no way people, you know, that there's going to be Dragon Gate people there, or at least the quality of people that are going to be there. Um, and uh, and so you had people who bought tickets months ago with the idea, because that's the tradition of, you know, Dragon Gate people on the show, and you're not getting any. And so you have a lot of people that are very upset. I think rightfully so. Um, today, you know, he posted uh, saying that, he, you know, he was rebooking all his shows to try to make it up to... Um, everybody and my thing is you know what what have you booked you know you haven't booked anything on most of these shows anyway so i don't know how you rebooked and so i think that's pretty you know crappy one of the things about this weekend is, is that no one really has announced anything as far as matches 
Um, everyone kept it pretty close to the chest, mainly because you've got all these competing companies, and I really wish the companies, you know, outside of WWE would do a better job of working together. Um, I understand you're still going to have, you know, competing shows and whatnot, but, um, you know, I, I just wish they would just work. You know, I'm not saying they have to work together. I'm just saying it better together just because I think that would be better. But So then, you know, the week of WrestleMania, we wouldn't, we, we would have full cards, and we would know all this stuff. Of course, you know, truthfully speaking, um, you know, people probably bought their tickets for these months ago, not worried about the cards, and, and that's part of the issue with the Dragon Gate thing is people bought their tickets long ago. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be any refunds or anything, so there is that issue. But anyways, um, everything looks to actually start on um, a Thursday. Um, Evolve will be having uh, a show. Um, with, you know, the regular Evolve guys. I've not watched an Evolve. I, I think I... Pretty sure I watched an Evolve show last last WrestleMania. I think that, that, would, that would have been the last Evolve show I probably watched. Um, so I have no idea who will be on this card. Um, let's see. Thursday. Let's see. Who's going to be on the Thursday card? Um, you're going to have... Uh, da, 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 da. Chris Hero versus Trent Beretta. That could be good. Um, the Bravado Brothers taking on Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Mm, that could be good. Um, Johnny Gargano taking on Rich Swan. That should be pretty good. Uh, Ricochet taking on Anthony Nice. Uh, Drew Gallick taking on Biff Busick. A.R. Fox taking on Caleb Connolly. Uh, Green Ant taking on Maxwell Chicago and other stuff as well. So, there you go for Thursday. Um... Of course, you have WrestleMania access, which, you know, I most of the people that are probably watching this probably would not go to that, um, as everyone that has ever gone to it will say, if you go once, you've gone enough, and I think that's the big problem with that, with access, is WWE needs to make it more of something that people want to go to and feel like they have to go to, um, you know, so there is that. Uh, then, of course, Friday <coughs> is when everything kind of really kicks into gear. You have a mid you have a Mid-South Wrestling Fan Fest. And um, also, you have a, a wrestling event that's going to be tied to that uh, Friday night. Um, I would say, you know, uh, if, if you've seen the Mid-South DVD, I would say this might be something to go to. Uh, there is actually going to be a Q&A, and if, if Ring of Honor wasn't running at the same time and I was actually there, I'd probably go to that. Um, because it's uh, it's Jim Cornette and, um, and um, Jim Cornette and... Uh, and uh, Bill Watts uh, doing a Q and A, and um, I would I, I'd be all over that. I would I you know and that that yeah, and that's at nine. So well eh, you know if if Ring of Honor ends early, which I doubt they will, um, you could always go to that because it sounds like they're trying to they're going to try to end the show early enough so people can go to the Jim Ross thing. So maybe maybe I'd probably enjoy that more than the Jim Ross thing. But, um, you know, but that's still kind of... But anyways, then you got a Super Card of Honor, um, the Ring of Honor show, which is going to have some stuff on it. I don't know what it's going to have on it. Um, let's see. Ah, yes, your main event will be a ladder war. Adam Cole taking on Jay Briscoe, supposedly to figure out who the real world champion is. Um, then you're going to have uh, Kevin Steen taking on Michael Elgin to decide who will take on the IWGP champ the IWGP champion at War of the Worlds, um, which is, of course, the New Japan show, which I don't know which one that is. I don't know if that's the New York one or the Toronto one. Um, either way, the, the Toronto one's almost sold out. The New York one is completely sold out. Uh, Mark Briscoe taking on Mike Bennett. Uh, Red Dragon taking on Hanson and Rowe and taking on Forever Hooligans to take on a World Championship shot at... Uh, War of the Worlds, I would imagine that's just, it does, really doesn't matter. I can't see it being the IWGP, you know, uh, championship match anyway. A heavyweight match, so it's going to be the Young Bucks no matter what. So, you would think. Anyways, and then Roderick Strong taking, Roderick Strong taking on Cedric Alexander. Uh, let's see, what else we have? Do, 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 ring of Honor. Then we have the first... Uh, Dragon Gate show, which again, um, no telling what's going to be on there. Then you have an evening with Jim Ross at 9 30, 
And then, of course, you have Kaiju Big Battle. If you want to see some crazy, funky, you know, stuff and you're not doing anything around midnight, you know, I do recommend going to Kaiju Big Battle. Uh, of course, Kaiju Big Battle, um, the Dragon Gate shows, and the Evolve shows will all be on, uh, what is it, Russell... Um, wrestling Network or whatever it is, they'll all be on iPay per view, so you can check them all out. So there is that. Um, <coughs> then Saturday, of course, we'll have access. We'll have Ring of Honor at um, 2 p.m. Um, WrestleCon takes on um, is going on uh, there as well. Um, they will have their own little wrestling show going on that night. So there is that. Um, you'll have the WWE Hall of Fame, of course, with Warrior and Jake Roberts and all sorts of stuff. And I'd probably, I'd definitely be going to the uh, WWE Hall of Fame um, just because of Jake Roberts. And of course, you'll also have Mercury Rising. And there will be, yes, LV, I know. Um, there will be a Shimmer Show, uh, Shimmer 62. Um, the la last year's Shimmer Show was pretty good. So this could be fairly good as well. Um, there will also be a Ring of Honor TV taping. So um, that afternoon, let's see, what do we got here? You've got, whoa, let's see, let's see. Do we have a card? LV, your 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 people. Why don't why don't I have a card here? Why don't we have a card here? Here, let's see if we can find a card. I have no card. It sucks. Okay, but you do have um, cheerleader Melissa taking on Lefisto um, in a 90-minute two out of three falls match. That could be pretty damn good. Um, and plus all the rest of Shimmer stuff. Um, the Shimmer show is usually pretty good, so I'd say if you want to see some really good women's wrestling, check that out. Uh, then Sunday, um, you'll have Access. You'll have uh, WrestleCon before WrestleMania as well, and of course you have WrestleMania, the big, huge, nasty show. Um, this year, I believe if you include the pre-show stuff, I believe, I believe we're talking, um, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but um, I believe, um, I think I heard six hours, I think, if you include the pre-show stuff. I, I could be wrong there, but I, I believe it's it's going to be some crazy, 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 um, crazy stuff, it sounds like. Um, I don't know how they're going to fill up a show that much because, you know, if you look at the show, the show starts, um, pay-per-view starts at um, six. Um Eastern, which would be 5 Central, um, will definitely be going to 10, so that's 5 hours, so as I said, it will be going for you know roughly 5 hours. Um, so, of course, you've got the big um, Daniel Bryan, Triple H match. I figured that will start off, I, the reason why I think that will start off the actual show is I, I, you know, people can call me a hater, but I think Triple H wants to go out and try to top uh, Brett versus Owen. Um, I really, 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 really think that the only way WrestleMania will be really good is if Daniel Bryan handcuffs off, they let him go out there, and they let him be the guy that so many of us saw so many years ago and steal the fucking show like crazy. Um, so, and if that's the case, this show, you know, that will be probably two matches that will be all sorts of awesome. Um, there, because really, that's pretty much it. <coughs> um, even though I'm big into Undertaker and Brock, or I was big in Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, um, I don't think this this match could be really good or it could be really bad. Um, I just you know, there's really just not that much going into it. This is that match should have been last year. Sting should have been this year. Um, you know, and Cena should have been next year, but it's not, you know, a year behind, not so good. Uh, then you have John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. That could be interesting. Um, I, I imagine this to be a bunch of overbooked story match stuff. Could be really good. You know, I mean, sometimes you get overbooked stuff that's really good, but sometimes not so much, and I don't have much faith in WWE, so there you go. Then you got the Andre the Giant, um, uh, 
Memorial Battle Royal, um, which, uh, you know, everybody and their brother is going to be in. Um, you've also got what the Tag Team Championship match, which will be, uh, which isn't on this list, which, uh, what is it? It's uh, the Matadors, um, what is this? The Matadors, the Usos, uh, and let's see, Matadors, Usos. Who's the other team? Oh, and the um, Real Americans. I think it's just three teams. Yes, no, no Goldust and Cody. In that's just mind-boggling to me. But um, yeah, the card itself looks very kind of thrown together. Um, and um, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't look thrown together. They led up to a lot of stuff, but it just it doesn't do anything for me could still wind up being great. I don't know how they're going to fill out all of this stuff, but anyways, I'll be I'll try to watch it on the network. Try. We will see if that works or not. Um, I, I'm not going in any illusions. We all know how this stuff goes sometimes. Um, so, But I will try to watch it on the network. So there is that. And then, of course, we have the great and wondrous, you know, Raw afterwards. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think. But also, Sunday morning, maybe you didn't know this. But there's also going to be a New Japan show, which uh, was led up, which is Invasion Attack. And, um, of course, there was a couple of New Japan shows a couple weeks ago, which uh, led up to Invasion Attack, um, which was the New Japan Cup, which um, I was looking very forward to. Um, turned out to be an okay tournament. The problem was Night 2. Um, night 1 was... Night one, Naito and Ishii was awesome. Um, everything else was was okay to good. He had one bad match. Um, the main event was just good, but um, it set up everything okay. It was a good, you know, opening round. Um, nothing really to go out of your way to see except for Naito and Ishii. And then you had day two, or not, or I should say the quarterfinals. I shouldn't say because I believe it's really like the the whole tournament, the New Japan Cup tournament is pretty long but <clears throat> and if you look at this it's it's not that there just wasn't a lot of just there was nothing great on the show and the best match was just really good um and the biggest problem the biggest problem with this um was really the uh the booking um because shibata lost to shelton benjamin um which as soon as that happened the entire crowd went uh and this wasn't even a hot crowd and they were just like, uh. And then Bad Luck Folly uh, beat Naito. Naito, um, Naito sorry, Naito. Um, which everyone was like, what the hell? Which meant, yes, we got Shelton Benjamin versus Bad Luck Folly in the quarterfinals. In which, and this is why. So that Bad Luck Folly could have someone to destroy in Shelton Benjamin. Then you had Gato, um, or Goto and, um, or not Goto. You had Suzuki and you had Goto and Suzuki, which they had a good match, um, and which with Suzuki winning, then Nakamura beat Prince Devitt, and they had a good match too. And then you had Suzuki versus Nakamura, which was not as good as you would have thought. Um, it wasn't bad, but it just it wasn't as as good as you would have thought it would have been. Um, and you had a really um, last night you had a great semi with. Um, Desperado, Ibushi, and Naito, Naito taking on uh, Ghetto, Ishii, and Okada, um, which was just all sorts of fun. And then Bad Luck Fale and Nakamura had a great match because of a mess up which busted Nakamura's nose all to hell. Um, and Nakamura, even before that, Nakamura was pulling Bad Luck Fale. He was dragging not Bad Luck Fale the best match he possibly could. And that just made it even that much better. And it would turn out to be pretty great. So night three was good once you got to it. But everything else was not that it was bad necessarily, but it was just kind of there. Um, the wrestling was, was good for the most part, but it was just, there was no real excitement, which, of course, leads to Invasion Attack pay-per-view, um, <coughs> which, I mean, it's... Wrestling-wise, it should be a great, maybe even an amazing show. The problem is that there's just nothing going on in it. It just comes out of nowhere. Uh, Nakamura won. Nakamura won the New Japan Cup, which meant he got to decide who he was going to take on, and he decided not to take on Okada, 
but to take on um, Tanahashi instead for the Intercontinental Championship, which does kind of make the heads on what's going on um, for us on outside, of course. In the whole scheme of things, which this is a problem without the jet, without English commentary, um, Nakamura is actually cited with Okada, so he was kind of giving his friend a pass and he was going after Tanahashi, but it's not kind of the way it played out, and it did play out that, that uh, Okada felt slighted. Uh, the other thing with the show is that it, it, uh, trying to think of how to how, how to put this properly. Um, the other thing with this show is that a lot of people, not properly, but a lot of people thought um, that this is when we were going to start seeing the Noah guys come into New Japan, and it doesn't seem to be the case. Maybe we'll get like confrontations on this show, and like I said, the, the show itself looks like it's going to be, wrestling-wise, could be really good, but um, it just is missing stuff. Uh, you have... Uh, for example, you have the IWGP Junior uh, Tag Championships, uh, the Young Bucks taking on uh, Desperado and Bushi. That has the possibility of being great, not going to lie. Then you have uh, Sakuraba, Nagata, and Makabe taking on Tichi, um, uh, Takamichinoku, and Suzuki. Yeah, that's probably not going to be very good. Um, well, I shouldn't say it. it could be good, but I just don't see it being being good. Maybe if they keep Sakuraba out. Um, Sakuraba and Suzuki stuff could be could, could be fun. Could be fun. Um, then you have uh, Kojima and Tenzan uh, def defending the uh, are they defend no um, taking on uh, Jack Stain and Rob Conway. I have no faith in that match whatsoever. Um, you have Azuka and Yano taking on the Gracies. Oh my God, that's probably going to be shit. Um, not even a lie. Then you have uh, Taguchi taking on Devitt. This could be extremely good. Um, this might be Devitt's last New Japan match. I know there's some debate about that, but that's, this could be Devitt's last New Japan match. I would imagine he wants to go out on top, so there is that. Um, then you have uh, Yoshihashi and Okada taking on uh, Bad Luck Fale and Tonga. And um, Bad Luck Fale is going to take on Okada on some uh, uh, B show at some point that I'm not going to watch. Then you have Naito taking on Ishii for the uh, the Never Championship again. That should be great. Uh, Shibata and Goto taking on Gallows and Carl Anderson. That could be great. And then you have the main event, uh, Tanahashi taking on Nakamura, and that should be great too. So it's not like there's like going to be, you know, there's bad matches on here, but the stuff that looks like it's going to be really good to great should be really good to great. And if that's the case, this will be a really good show. <coughs> the problem is, is there's just not a lot of hype going into it because there's just not a lot of stuff that people feel like they have to see. Um, like I said, maybe, maybe we'll get some Noah guys on this show, and if that's the case, then that will be fun and exciting. So anyways, I've gone on long enough. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'll try to watch as much stuff as I can. I can't guarantee, like I did last year, I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to watch everything that I want to watch. Um, but we will see, and hopefully everything works out okay as far as the network. Um, like I said, not holding my breath on that front, but we will see. So anyways, with that, I am out. Have a good one. Later.